You can see that? Uh, yes, we can okay. see. All right, so uh, thank you. Uh, and I'm a, a professor and the assistant dean at Point Loma Nazarene University in the business school. And I'm uh, embarking upon some research. I'll give you a little bit of background as I go through it, but it's on DEI leadership and this the initiative for inclusion for a remote workforce. We've had a couple of things go on in society globally, not, not just in the US, uh, that have sort of changed the, the dialogue and the direction on this. So I'll jump in. That's a picture of our university uh, on the, uh, on the uh, Pacific Ocean here in San Diego. So a little bit about my background, because this informs why I'm doing this research. Uh, I've been C-level in all these companies. My career was over 30 years, and I was in the executive suite for running all these companies. So I was very, very focused on the application. I teach management, leadership, or behavior, very focused on the application of theories into a career, into the business world. Uh, my background is informed, as well as my education and research, as to what's the best way, what are some coming trends, or what are some pressing issues for leaders in, in any business to sort of. So I have a lot of uh, professional experience. When I started uh, roughly five years ago, made the transition into uh, uh, academia, the last two years I've been doing an extensive amount of research, specifically looking at how does, how does business, how do organizations, how do leaders lead in a post-COVID world? And it was a lot of things post-COVID, uh, is such a broad uh, uh, title, but uh, we had social unrest on a global basis. We had pandemic. We had reorganizations and re-strategizations of businesses and supply chains. Uh, the political pressures and uh, economic forces, whether it's uh, uh, the monetary system or whatever, we had these massive amount of changes over the last three years. I did a ton of research on what the new world order is for, for work and leadership and culture and that. Uh, had uh, so the, over uh, about the last 18 months, we published about five different articles that sort of lead, leads me into the research that I'm doing now. And it's about what does it look like going forward? There have been these trends, things have changed, but it's been it's been both enabled by technology and also by pandemics. What does it look like? What should leaders be thinking about now? So with that, uh, my research I've been working on is DEI leadership initiatives for inclusive uh, inclusive of remote workforce. Uh, tremendous amount of discussion going on about uh, diversity, equity, uh, and inclusion, inclusion in, in society today. And that's great, but we also are dealing with sort of these, these massive forces where there's more and more hybrid and remote workers. Uh, what I wanted to do was kind of go through and look at some key issues, this, this re increased responsibility amongst leadership and organizations. What does it look like in the future? And then understanding and, and coming to grips with what is what is this the idea of location? How important is that into organizations? Because it can change the culture, it can change communication, it can change leadership structure itself. Uh, it also changes the financial picture. Uh, less big physical locations where everybody has to go to work it can be a benefit from a perspective of uh, the cost of doing business. The big concern, the big fear, the thing we're trying to untap in this is this idea, is it out of sight, out of mind? Is it fair? Does DEI apply to somebody that's working remote or even in a hybrid situation? Will they get the opportunity to, to make network connections, to establish their proficiency or their expertise in any given area if they are in truly a remote world? That's going to be fundamental for leaders, for businesses, for all of us as we start to recruit and, re and try to retain the best and the brightest of our workforce. Certainly, there's been uh, no shortage of this struggle over the last few years to try to hire the best people, uh, the, the elements of physical location to be uh, expanded more than ever. And now, over the last, really the last year, last eight months, it's really gotten become uh, a, a flashpoint is the whole idea of artificial intelligence in organizations. So that's sort of the abstract, that's the focus. What does DEI look like in a world that's sort of driven by remote hybrid workers? So uh, what we did uh, typically is go a very deep dive in a qualitative research. Uh, so I selected C-level executives, founders of uh, several million dollars to multi-billion dollar organizations to do extensive deep dives uh, and interviews with these. And we've had all kinds of different representations from different industries, from uh, uh, from gender or demographic elements, from uh, geographical locations in the world. These are the, the people that I'll highlight in the, the research as I go through today. 
but we've had presidents of uh, a tech company, iHeartMedia. We had CEO of a, a minority owned uh, uh, bakery uh, in San Diego that has now national prominence as a result of uh, the pandemic and uh, Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, the senior director of, of people who works herself in a remote position for a multi-million dollar organization, national brand, uh, and then uh, a software services company, an event uh, a producer, uh, a national global perspective with the uh, CEO of, of Juno. And then uh, very important is a multi-billion dollar global operation is the director of diversity and sustainability at Sony Electronics. So I did deep dives on all these interviews. What it looked like is basically the, the methodology is these, I sent out these qualitative deep dive uh, 12 question surveys, gave everybody several weeks to work on it, to go deep, to sort of reference, to provide examples, to wrestle with their own opinions, to also sort of uh, articulate what is it that their company at their level, what is it that they're doing to think about DEI remote workforces in the future? Uh, followed up uh, from the standpoint of we did extensive one-on-one -on -one interviews, uh, both live and on Zoom, and we would spend probably a minimum of, uh, of an hour to an hour and a half with everyone after we've already pulled back and collated their data. That's the way we approached it. Uh, three sort of uh, key elements of this research, we wanted to look at culture, we wanted to look at communication, and we wanted to look at courage. How do those three elements specifically in our interviewing and our and our lit review and, and searching the uh, research has already been done, how do those sort of play out as leaders start to un understand, identify what their future strategies are for these technologies? First is, is culture. Uh, yeah, pull just a sample of some of the lit review. Norms or unwritten rules will once again emerge, drive how employees work and interact. This is a tremendous opportunity to rewrite traditional rules that have created systematic barriers, challenges to old assumptions, to create a broader, more inclusive uh, definitions of success and leadership. We're right at the time, organizations, leadership is at a time where they're having to rethink everything that's been in play for so many years, so many decades. Uh, so we, we, we're pulling in research that sort of uh, revolve on that theme. The time is now, this will have a big impact on your culture. Uh, and then, you know, just grabbing a couple of samples from some of the research. Uh, ingrain the concept so it's not separate. Make it culture and not initiative. And I think that's very insightful uh, because if it's a, a sort of a process, if you uh, you know try to apply a formula or check a box on on a DEI strategy in corporate America, it's not going to go very well. People aren't really going to believe and buy into it. Subsequently, the culture will not be strong. So we looked at it from the standpoint of culture. Lots of research there. Communication. Uh, it, you know, the uh, from the research, one article I just wanted to cite is in-person interactions are fewer, communicated outside of real time is more common. As a result, it can be harder to feel connected to colleagues and easier for miscommunication to occur. Well, that's kind of important if you're actually starting to talk about trying to give diversity, equality, and inclusion for people that are not necessarily that you're going to be seeing, interacting with, or uh, having some sort of connection, a community sort of a, a relationship with. Pulling on some of the executives, uh, the CEO of, of uh, Juno says, basically, very simple, tell your story, be genuine and authentic, use social media, i.e. they use Slack quite a bit. And, and that's how they're going to use communication. It's no longer the days where everybody comes into the office, you have a, a town hall meeting, doing a corporate Zoom for all the different uh, uh, entities or people located out through the country is not really effective when you're talking about these issues. It's gotta be something deeper, more personal. It's gotta be con very conscious. Uh, all of the previous research we've done was really focused on the, the impact or the effects of the pandemic so much of, of what was revealed in these discussions was this idea of communication, not necessarily knowing everything, but actually being able to share, keep people informed was critical as we we've, you know, uh, identified in numerous uh, executives in global organizations. Look at it from the standpoint of courage, because you know, it's one thing to change a culture, it's one thing to communicate what is, what is right, how much and when, and what does that look like? But this is driven by leadership. This research is designed to actually take a deep dive on leaders 
but then also come out with learnings or applications that other leaders may use in, in the formation, in the organization, in the, the operation uh, of the businesses they use. The research would say you know, everyone has room for improvement, but for people in positions of leadership, competencies such as recognizing, addressing biases in the workplace are essential. And we, we believe that, and our, pri our, our prior research actually demonstrates that as well. Talking to the leaders that we're working with now, meet people where they are acknowledge yourself, you are a work in progress. And we think that's actually, you know, for a leader to acknowledge that they're a work in progress sometimes can be very challenging. Uh, leader, leaders can uh, feel like they have to cast the image of I know all, see all, do all, uh, and, and portray this, this element of the strength and unwavering sort of accountability. The reality is in a DEI world with a col collision of, you know, work not being based in a, in a central office or a building, leaders have to be knowledgeable. They have to, as referenced in some of the previous, they have to be authentic and genuine. And they have to recognize and also talk about that they don't know it all and understand that they are a work in progress. That will demonstrate how well the company, the leadership actually embrace this idea of, of DEI. And it's a, it's a slow process. It'll take a long time for this to sort of articulate in every organization. But fundamentally, we view it as three, the, the three cornerstones of this courage, culture, and communication are going to be vital. Uh, partial lit review, there's, it's interesting, there's, uh, it's getting more, but it's very limited uh, looking at that particular topic. Lots of research on DEI, lots of research on corporate structure, lots of uh, you know, research on leadership and culture. But when you start to parse it down to something that we feel is very, very real, uh, becomes much thinner. So we're pulling lots of different resources and data points and coming at it from multiple uh, angles to try to understand this. What does it look like? Not just to report on what was done or what the current situation is, but what does it mean for the future? Uh, very much uh, all the classes I teach, whether it's undergrad or graduate, uh, executive uh, MBA programs, it's all about this idea of connecting theory to application. What does it look like? What does it mean for your organization and for your style? So the conclusion and finding DEI uh, and remote workforce issues will increase will increase in the future. It's not a it's not a situation where you can ignore it. Uh, and from for a lot of reasons, you know the you your organization if you want it to be optimized, you want it to be competitive, you want to ret retain and attract the best and the brightest. It's going to be required to strategically account for this shift of priorities, this change of values in society, in the way you run your businesses whether you're a, a several million dollar local regional business or a multi-billion dollar global operation, uh, there, our research is pointing to this fact that you have to consider these factors and it's not a situation that is sort of a temporary, it's not like the pandemic, you know, you know, this too shall end. The reality is this has changed the way people view and expect the business, businesses and leadership to go as forward. Quiet quitting, the great resignation, all these things are underlying this fundamental research. Any questions or comments? <laughs>